Alrighty. Hey gang. Welcome back. Uh, this is going to be a quick one. Uh, I've had uh, quite a few questions um, regarding the stove and cooking and, and uh, so I wanted to go over a few of those with you guys and I got a few announcements that I wanted to make and uh, again I just want to say thanks everybody for joining me um, on building these things. I'm having a great time again interacting with you all and seeing your stoves. Nick, gosh, thanks for your pictures. Those looked that looked awesome. Um, really excited to see these things come together and, and start to see you guys burning them and, and share your enthusiasm because I'm just I'm thrilled. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do I've got I took this lovely beer bottle glass that my uh, loving sister made for me for Christmas and I measured out one pint of water and it's at about 65 degrees right now. So I'm going to set that there on the hottest spot of the stove and we'll cover it and then I'll just, uh, Lord, I got a little timer over here and we'll uh, just see how long we take to, to boil if my timer will work. Okay, there we go. Alright, so we'll boil some water. So a lot of people have been asking about how you adjust the temperature on the on the top to cook, and you know it's really simple and it's really intuitive, um, but it seems probably a little funky or hard when you haven't used it. And the way it works is the flame path down there uh, is in a separate layer. There's a there's two let's say there's two elevations in here, two levels of firebox. So the first level it swirls around. Uh, and goes through its complete combustion phase and then it comes out up under the top right over here where I just put the the water Then there's a serpentine path made with ceramic fiberboard and the surrounding brick and things like that That means the flue gases kind of travel like this along the top. So if you want to adjust the temperature you simply <laughs> Listen to that that one's already a little bit warmed up. It's probably close to boiling so You simply move it on the top closer to the um, exit from the riser let's say for more heat or farther away for less so there's a simmering spot way back over here where I just interfere with my fan uh, and you can leave things over there and, and they'll simmer really nicely depending on of course what's going on in the firebox but there's a gradient all the way along there and although it sounds a little bit weird it's really easy to cook on you know you just move your, your saucepan as you go across the top and you're able to find just really the perfect temperature kind of regardless of what's going on in the firebox now you can use the firebox to moderate and control the temperatures as well you can put in different wood you know i use fir when i want it to be hot in my case i do have some hardwood but not much um, so fir tends to be my hotter wood Although maple, I have access to and it does pretty well. You might use oak if you're on the East Coast or something like that, hedge, if you're in the middle of the country. Um, and then I'll use alder and, and our softer woods. They're technically a hardwood, isn't that funny? Um, but I'll use those, I think. <laughs> but I'll use those for cooler temps. Although I don't really worry too much about that, like I said, because I have the top you know, gradient to work with. But you can do that, and that, that would help you with regards to oven temperatures as well. Um, as well, you've got a range of, of the time of the fire. You know, you can put the wood in right before you cook or let it burn down a little bit. And then you can, of course, do some air adjusting. You can use a plug to plug the primary air, and that'll cool things down a little bit. So there's a myriad of ways that you can adjust temp, but in practice, it really kind of just comes out to you really just kind of stop thinking about it. It becomes very, very, very simple. So, um, yeah, I wanted to to show, you, you know, some of you haven't experienced this, that that it's much simpler than you're probably imagining to cook on. Um, regarding the oven, you know, the oven in my situation, because I'm using that lower um, oven placement, it's a roasting oven. So, as I've mentioned before, it doesn't get terribly hot. Now, now that it's winter and it's cold, I've been burning it quite a bit. I've been push, I've pushed that oven up to close to 400 degrees before. So, it doesn't mean it has to be a cool roasting oven. It just means that it's um, on average somewhere between, let's say, this time of year, it's been 250 and 350. Is my no, my thermometer's on it 
uh, have run out of batteries because I stopped caring because <laughs> it just seemed to work every time I used it. Um, so, oh look at this. So we're at uh, 3 minutes and 45 seconds and, oh geez, it's almost blowing over. So that probably took 2 or 3 minutes. <laughs> so if you're wondering if the thing has enough power, the answer is uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I can't even, like to sear a steak in a cast iron pan, it's almost too hot right there. I know that's like impossible, right? But I mean, it is ridiculously hot right here. You'll be able to tell this one, like I said, was already, it's not boiling, it's not even close, but if I put it here, it'll just pop right to boiling in probably 10 seconds. Can you hear it? <laughs> So a lot of power, a really nice cooking gradient. It's highly adjustable. It's real easy to work with and real easy to cook on. And that was one of the main points I wanted to bring up about the tiny stove. So um, some of the other questions I've been getting really have been just regarding temps and bench temps and stuff um, because it's now colder. Now the last bench temp video I did, um, I actually had the baffle between the oven and the bench closed because I had, uh, you know, built this in the summer and then it, we'd had a nice warm fall. And um, I had had that baffle closed. Now, that didn't mean it wasn't heating. It, it still, this has two pathways and it was still acting as a bell, but it was after exiting the oven, heating all this other brick mass that it finally got to the bench. So I've since opened that baffle and um, I'll make a little rattling noise here while I find my digital thermometer. Uh, but, you know, at this point, I've been burning, oh, uh, maybe just a couple hours this morning, and I let the fire go out, I put in one load at 8 last night, and then I let it go out last night because it was fairly warm, and it was, it's was it been warm in here. It's 35 outside now. This bench is 110, um, almost across its whole length, and I talked about having a thermometer inside there, and last time it was at about 100 degrees. Now, at the very end of the bench, I'm seeing temps of 220 inside the bench at the far end. And if I, we did have some cold snaps. If I run the stove for a long time, um, I can get the bench seats closest to the stove kind of uncomfortable to sit on. I think the hottest I've seen them are 150 degrees on the top. So, pretty hot. Um, so, bench temperatures fluctuate this stove does have an adjustable baffle uh, so you can do a summer and a winter type operation you know if I were to burn this in a cool morning in the in the spring and heat that bench up to 120 degrees by the time noon came around and the Sun came up I'd be pretty bummed so I use that baffle to sort of moderate how much heat I'm gonna store I guess you'd say in that bench is my extra thermal storage secondary to the body of the stove so, um, some other questions on the bells. A lot of people were asking, um, you know, what happens at the bottom of the bell? What about clean outs? You know, ash can fill in there and actually create an insulative layer. You're going to want to be able to clean it out at some point. My feeling is you just go in through the top of the benches every now and then. And in a stove like this, it's not like a flue run pipe. It will not clog and restrict and need to be cleaned yearly. It's probably going to be a you know, five year job once every five years to get in there and maybe take some stuff out, but it's going to have to clog a long way and a little bit of, of fluff in the bottom or even a lot of fluff in the bottom isn't going to affect performance. And if anything, it'll insulate the floor a little bit um, and give you a little bit uh, better performance. So um, the tops are sealed with clay and mortar that or clay sand mortar. That was another question I got. Um, you just stick them down like the bricks and that makes them easy to remove and does seal them very well. Uh, and I think that's most of the questions on that stuff. So, um, lastly, I just wanted to <clears throat> announce, uh, that I've been creating new plans for you. I now have the brick rocket mass heater plan that's up and available for sale. That's a really simple build using my J tube, um, ceramic fiberboard core. And it's a simple, simple build, all brick and ceramic fiberboard core no hardware you can build it without cutting any bricks there's a few cuts in the plans but there's small little chunks that could just be filled in with mortar if you didn't want to cut any bricks it could be built really easily by somebody in in a quick weekend no problem um 
So that's a really nice simple heater design that I designed with the intention of sharing one that looks nice, doesn't have a barrel, will heat a space well. It'd be an ideal greenhouse heater in my opinion. It's got a lot of mass for a small footprint um, and a great small space heater. So <clears throat> I'll be adding to that series. There'll be a um, a few more variations on that stove coming in terms of plans and then one of the biggest things, one of the most exciting things is I've been working with a third party and uh, I think pretty soon here you should be able to buy cores that are uh, pre-made and shipped right to you um, for those of you who don't want to go to the trouble of sourcing the material and purchasing it and cutting it and all that. So that's coming down the pike probably in the next week or two and I'm real excited about that uh, to share that with you. So I've um, got some good stuff in the works folks and, and uh, yeah thanks you guys so much as always for all your support and um, comments and questions. I'm, I'm having a great time interacting with all of you. The folks who are building stoves, thanks so much for the great questions and feedback. You know, I make a lot of mistakes along the way. I'm, I'm, um, I've, I've been held up on releasing plants for a long time because I always thought, oh, I can't do it, all the details. And so finally I just got over the hump and dove in and, and uh, there's, you know, some mistakes here and there. And, and uh, so we'll work through those together. At this point, actually, they're 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 really well cleaned up thanks to a lot of help from a lot of nice folks out there Dell and Zisa and um, a lot of other people Marlo have been giving me input and uh, thank you so much for all that so um, if you haven't built a stove before take a look at my plans I got some really easy stuff uh, to work off of and uh, by all means folks keep those questions coming and let me know what I can do um, to help you guys get these into your lives and get these out there in the world um, as you guys probably know you know my goal my belief is that we can do better we can heat ourselves with this wonderful renewable resource without um, a huge toll on our air quality and uh, we can certainly do far better than we have in for a long time now so um, so I got a phone call or I had a nice phone call with a commenter yesterday and he said, what are you up to? You, you know, how are you going to make a living? And I said, you know, this is just a side hustle. It's, it's, I've learned over the last decade of doing this that it's uh, incredibly hard to, uh, to sell um, hard goods because of the regulations and people aren't, you, you know, don't know about it. Um, that isn't my goal. You know, my goal has never been to turn this into um, my living, although I'm, I'm starting to do more and more. But uh, my goal is to, to share with you guys as best I can. Um, something that I feel is better for all of us that will help all of us move forward you know we we ha we still have lots of wood in, in some parts of the world and it's a renewable resource on my land I'll never be able to keep up with how fast the alders grow here uh, and so but you know I look across the street and I see smoke coming out of my neighbor's chimneys I mean I want to go over there and build them a heater right um, so you know my belief is that by sharing this we can make the world a better place for all of us to live in more comfortable homes with better air quality for us and our neighbors and our children and so that brings me to kind of my final point is uh, folks if you're going to be putting the time in to build these things and you don't feel like experimenting or playing around please build a tried tested um, proven design where you can see the testo um, results you know peter's batch box a standard j my riserless core something that you know is burning with very very low um, carbon monoxide indicating a complete combustion and at a high efficiency rate um, so we're not filling you know our air with um, smoke essentially so <laughs> sorry about the background noise okay so i'm ranted enough and uh, I really appreciate you guys listening and watching all the feedback. Let me know what I can do to help you get into some of these things. And uh, I will see you next time. I got a pretty good idea for uh, something I want to share with you next. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.